Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm very excited to be here because I'm taking an age-old Blender trick, which is retopologizing a flat surface. Blender Secrets did it first. I'm just going to do it better. I'm going to make it procedural and I'm going to make it adaptable and editable and it's going to be much more useful. So, uh, what is the original problem that Blender Secrets solved? Imagine you have a flat mesh. Normally you're going to kind of cut something out of an image is the case, uh, but I'm just going to take a plane maybe bevel the uh, vertices a little, and let's make this look a bit more complicated. So I'm gonna extrude here, and I'm gonna extrude here, and kind of merge these. So our geometry is a triangle, a quad, and an end gone. Very, very bad for rigging or anything like this, right? We want a nice quad-based geometry so we can do good deformations or whatever. There's There are use cases for this. So uh, normally what you would do to remesh is you would add a remesh modifier. But you can see it looks really ugly. And we can do a bit by kind of increasing the resolution, but if we kind of go into the wireframe here, you can see that the edges are very sloppy, and especially in this triangle, uh, not only do we get a uh, triangle, but we kind of get this weird edge over here. Uh, so it's not guaranteed uh, to work. So uh, why don't we use one of the better algorithms? Great. Uh, smooth is the one that always has quad-based geometry, so we like it. We try smooth. It gets rid of everything. So the original trick was to make this flat object three-dimensional so that smooth works on it, and then we're gonna compress it back down to 2D. So you'd add a solidify modifier, you'd throw that on top, give it a bit of thickness. So now this is a three-dimensional object, and you can see, especially once we increase this octree depth, uh, we get a mice, a much, not a mice, a much nicer geometry where even this tip is a quad. It's all quad-based, and you can do this at any resolution. But remember, this is still three-dimensional. So what you would have to do is you need to set this to only rim. That's important. And then you'd apply these modifiers. You have this mesh. And then you'd run a merge by distance with a distance of the thickness from before. And that is to compress this and make it flat. Although you can see it doesn't work perfectly. Like this thing has a couple bumps and you can play with the merge by distance to fix that. It's not a perfect method by any means, okay? So this was the original method. Not only does it not work perfectly in some cases, uh, but if I wanted to kind of go back and like edit any of this geometry, like say extrude this, uh, we can't retopologize it anymore. We've baked in the modifiers. We've lost control. And I can't say change how much you uh, subdivide it. I can't do that either. Uh, so here is the nice procedural approach. It's very basic, the idea, but it's very powerful. Instead, of applying these modifiers and losing control, let's never get rid of the modifiers. So instead of applying them and using merge by distance, let's use geometry nodes. And we're gonna get more complicated than this. But apply geometry nodes and do merge by distance inside of here, because that's a node. So this way we've never lost control, and I can set this to like 0 0.01 or whatever it's supposed to be. Let's make sure that this geometry is how it's supposed to be. I think it is, but just in case, we'll give it a bit of buffer room to flatten out. So not only does this seem to get better results, I don't know if it's using a different merge by distance algorithm or something like that, uh, but it's procedural, meaning meaning at any point I can kind of extrude this and now that's retopologized. And I can extrude this and this is retopologized and we can make edits on the fly. And almost more importantly, I would say, is at any point we can go into this remesh and change the resolution, okay? So you've, you haven't lost control. You think that would be the solution, right? Very simple fix. There is still an issue. I want you to notice the density of this grid, like how small are the quads, okay? I'm now gonna take this and just extrude a face very, very far. You can see this geometry has gotten like a lot bigger. So here's the before, very dense, and then here is the after, right? Uh, so the issue is uh, when we are picking an octree depth and a scale, it doesn't really change it on the fly depending on the surface area or the size of the mesh. Uh, whereas when it gets bigger, we need to divide more finely. Um, it doesn't do that. Uh, so we need to kind of drive this, and that's actually going to be done with drivers, uh, to on the fly pick how much it's subdividing. So you can see not only can we uh, change our geometry, but we're also going to change the uh, subdivision level on the fly. So main thing to note is we can take our octree depth and keep it pretty high. So at a seven or an eight, whatever you want to keep it at. 
But uh, now if we change the scale, this is basically a slider that lets us control the resolution in some sense. We're keeping the octree depth at seven, but we're gonna mess with the scale. And when this is set very close to one, it's gonna be at its densest. And when it's very close to zero, it's gonna be at its sparsest. I wanna change this on the fly. Well, first of all, we need to know what happens when I extrude this mesh. Well, you're gonna notice that the location rotation scale stay at their default values, but it's the dimension that changes. So here we have an X dimension of 3.31. I extrude this and now it's at 5.4. So we're changing the X dimension or we could stretch it on the Y uh, this is what information we need uh, to modify the scale. However, you're like, okay, we'll just copy it as a driver. You right click, there's nothing we can do with this. So it turns out you can't extract dimension as a driver, even though it's the exact information we need. And it's fact, the only way uh, to do this. But there's another way around it. And this took a, a bit of an angling. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the scale and I'm going to add a driver. If you haven't seen drivers before, it's like basic little expressions, like you have an After Effects and stuff like this, uh, to basically make the value, in this case of the scale, uh, dependent on some basic function, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna use a scripted expression. I'm gonna say use self, so it's using itself, and then the expression is just gonna be VAR, which is to say variable. If you don't know what this means, I'll explain it in a second, so I'm just gonna get rid of this. If I update dependencies, you're gonna see it's gonna give us an error because what we're saying here, and I'm gonna edit the driver, is set this to the variable called the VAR, but we haven't defined what that is. Of course, it doesn't know what to do, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add an input variable called VAR. These are called the same thing. You can call one of these Apple and also the other one Apple, but make sure they are the same. Uh, maybe just V is easier than VAR. It's up to you. So, uh, we have V. Uh, what we want to say is V should be the uh, dimension. And by the way, I'm not using X because that can be confused with different things. So let, let me just go to VAR just to keep it simple. We want this to extract the X dimension of our mesh, but we can't do that. Well, it turns out that you can if you do it explicitly. So for our object, we're going to choose the plane. That's the original object. And then for the path, you have to type out dimensions not dimension, dimensions. And then in your brackets, you're either gonna put a zero, one, or two. Zero is X, one is Y, two is Z. It's like an array of the X, Y, and Z dimension components. So if we want X, we're gonna set it to zero. And now when I update my dependency, you're gonna see all of a sudden, um, our scale kind of caps off at 0.99. And I'll explain why that is in a second. But when we go to edit driver, you can see it takes on the value 3.36 which is, if we go into the thing, uh, that should be roughly the dimension of our uh, thing. So it's pulling right from it, right? If I set this to four, uh, it's not only gonna stretch this, but now if we go to edit driver, you can see it's pulling the number 4.06. I don't know why it's a bit off to be honest, but that's the thing, okay? So uh, now when we change this on the fly, it should be taking that number on the fly. However, you can see the scale is stuck at 0.99. The thing is, scale can only go between zero and one. So what we have to do is we have to just kind of modify this a bit. So instead of variable, I'm gonna take it and just divide it by 20, okay? This way, whatever number we have kind of fits within the uh, range of zero to one, right? So you have to go up to a dimension of 20 before we go out of bounds. So you can see we have a very low resolution thing and we can fix that by increasing our octree depth. But now the key insight is as I extrude this even very, very far out, you can see it maintains its density. So here's the density here, here's the density there. There is no change. So now it's kind of scaling on the fly. However, and that's a solution, great. What if I scale on the Y axis? Again, we lose resolution. So somehow we need to have this respect both the X and Y dimensions, not the Z because it's a flat object. And you can kind of extend this to three, three dimensional objects, but we won't talk about that yet. Um, we somehow need to use both of these pieces of information. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna edit the driver, and this time we're gonna use two variables. So you can just add another input variable, and your scripted expression could be a mess of all these variables together. So my second variable, I'm gonna call it var2. Doesn't matter what you call it, just re reuse the name. And again, I'm gonna use the plane, but this time I'm gonna write dimensions using the first, not the zeroth, but the first, 
uh, element in that array. So remember, 0 is x, 1 is y, z is 2. So now we're looking at the y component. Now if I update my dependencies, if I update them, nothing is going to happen, right? Because our expression only depends on the first variable. It doesn't matter that we made a second one. It's, it's not referencing it. So somehow we need to make an expression that looks at both variables and says, kind of take the one that's more significant, like if it's more stretched on the y, look at the y and then do the scaling according to that and vice versa for the x. Here's how you do that. So I'm going to use var divided by 20, comma, var2, which is this the name of the variable, divided by 20. So we have both of them now. But I'm going to take the maximum of them. So what I've written, uh, written out is the maximum of two entries, uh, variable 1 divided by 20 and variable 2 divided by 20. So we're taking these two things, we're comparing them, and we're going to say output the maximum. And let's update our dependencies. So you can see what happens now is it's much more dynamic. If I excrete, excrete, increase on the y-axis, you can see it works. If I increase on the x-axis, you can see it works. If I increase on both axes, so you can look at the density and I increase, it maintains its density. It works. So it's not like we just kind of scaled it up um, without. So let me, let me show you an example. So if I was to get rid of this driver, you can see it just kind of stretches this and it doesn't add more geometry. Whereas with our driver, it changes it on the fly. So that's kind of the key insight here. Not only uh, can we uh, model and just change the and, ha and have this remesh on the fly, uh, but it now works with our dimensions. And I do not believe this was not designed uh, to work with three-dimensional objects. Yes, it, it does not work with the three-dimensional objects. I think there are fixes you can do to get it to work, um, but I'm not doing that yet because this the whole point of this is two-dimensional objects. So basically, there's my solution that not only does this thing better, but it proceduralizes it. So again, if you had the very niche use case of needing to not only remesh a flat surface, which people do all the time, but you also wanted to keep control of it in a procedural way, uh, this is the tutorial for that. Very specific use case, but nobody's done this before. So just wanted to give you that. And uh, as always, uh, thank you to the patrons that support this channel and let me find weird little exploits like this in Blender uh, and let, let me do that as a job. So uh, thank you to the patrons. If you want to join, uh, there is a link in the description. And I'm going to take this file. Let me save it right now. I'm going to call it Remesh. Patreon, uh, you can download that from the Patreon without adding all these expressions and modifiers and all that. You can download that and anything I've made over the last three or four years. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you, patrons.